is longtime war activist and civil rights activist. He registered voters in the segregated South and was arrested for resisting the Vietnam draft. He was a journalist for Rolling Stone magazine and remains a successful author today, David Harris. How sweet is it to live someplace where your congressperson calls the peace demonstrations rather than being the object of them? For, for someone who marched in his first anti-war march in 1964, this is still a kind of mind-boggling proposition. We have been blessed to have Lynn who has steadfastly carried this message to Washington, D.C. But this, of course, does not reduce the need for us to keep sending the message. So, here goes. Dear Mr. President, this policy of empire in the Hindu Kush and in the Tigris Valley is a disaster. It was a disaster when it first started, it was a disaster when you took over as president, and it continues to be a disaster today in no small part because of your contributions to it. At a time when we need friends badly, it has alienated the friends we had and made it virtually impossible for any more of them to join us. At a time when we are under real threat from enemies, it has empowered our enemies and engage them on the ground where they have maximum advantage and we are more vulnerable. It has gone into an unstable part of the world and made it even less stable than what it was. It has cost us two trillion dollars so far, which we had to borrow from the Chinese, and will probably cost us another two trillion in the future at least. At a time when the country is bankrupt, the first source of that bankruptcy is easy to see halfway around the world. <laughs> Worse still has been the cost in lives. 7,000 dead Americans, at least 300,000 who will be damaged in ways that they will never completely recover from. Today, there is less electricity and less clean water in Iraq than there was before we arrived. We have no knowledge of just how many Iraqis have died, but it's at least in the six figures. We know that there are five million of them who have lost their homes and are currently refugees. We have engaged in Afghanistan a people who have never been conquered, not by Genghis Khan, not by Alexander the Great, not by the British Raj, not by the Russians, and certainly will not be conquered by us. We have become a destroyer in a world that drastically needs us to be a builder instead. And finally, of course, Mr. President, what this has cost us is ourselves. We have become a people who hijack strangers off the street and hang them up by their thumbs. We have become a people who stand up from the top of the government on down and declare that we torture and like doing it. We have lost so much of ourselves in this process. I'm old enough to remember when we attributed these kind of qualities to our enemies. Indeed, to display those kind of qualities was enough to become an enemy. And now we are those people. And there is only one antidote to it, Mr. President. There are no half measures here. You bring the boys and girls home. Every last one of them. No residual bases. No further presence, 
no American hegemony, no leftovers. We bring them home, we bring them home now, and we keep them home where they belong. And, and Mr. President, in case you've forgotten, we're the reason you got through Iowa in the first place. And we deserve better than this. And if you are not smart enough to drop your George Bush costume and act like the sensible, intelligent man we expected you would be, then we're going to have to go out and find a president who is. Right